angry ones. So this message, I'm, you know, I'm still working on the heart stuff, but I asked God a lot of questions, and I was watching, and they wasn't the hood fights. <laughs> These just fight fights, breaking out airports, carnival cruises, frontier airlines, spirit. You know them, them hundred. You know them airlines where you got to buy your own bags. They just fight. You know, I, I like, Lord, this is just crazy what's happening. And God began to deal with me about the anger in people. People are just angry. And there's angry inside, inside of people. And then the Lord told me there's anger inside of members. I've touched on this a bit, but man. You can't be in here feeling away. Amen. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about your spouse, your family, your mother, your father. You in here with those feelings. The enemy is going to take that and use that against you in this hour. Makes it very easy for the, for the devil to get you off track when you are harboring anger. And you got to realize anger isn't always, you know, fighting and punching. Anger can be deep-seated disdain for someone. And it could be for yourself. You're angry because of the choices you may have made or the choices that were made for you. And you can carry that to the point to where it bleeds into your thinking and your decision-making. Amen? So let's talk about this. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash the angry ones dot P D F. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 and 26, be ye angry. How many of you get angry? It's okay to get angry. Somebody cut you off on the road. That makes you angry. It makes me angry. Amen. I ain't raising a finger or nothing. I used to. I'm delivered. Before I was saved, you know, before I was saved, I'm ready to just pull over and let's discuss this. <laughs> I don't know why that used to make me mad, but then I do know why. That used to make me mad because I wasn't happy with myself. That's what it was. I wasn't happy with myself, so the first person that do something going to have to contend with me. My sister Tanya, she'll tell you, I'm a total different person. I used to be so hot-headed. What not? Just, I mean, I was, man, I had a, oh, I had a bad way about me. Little old bitty dude. Just a bad way. And God had to address that. That was, that, that was a reason I felt like that. Because I wasn't happy with me. And I wasn't happy with some things that happened to me that weren't fair. And I was taking that out on people. Amen. Amen. When God called me, he had to deal with that because he couldn't have me mad at me up doing the truth behind hip hop. I'm going to burn the church down. <laughs> Y'all, everybody going to hell. It's over. Just, I, just die. I mean, if you, you know what I'm saying? I had, I had to go through a process of deliverance to get that out of me so that what I was projecting was of God and not of me. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says be angry. Nothing wrong. Jesus got angry. Went to the temple, threw folks out, turned tables over. But the second part, be ye angry, but what? Sin not. Sin not. So don't let your anger cause you to do something you're not supposed to do. Amen. 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 And then don't stay angry. Let not the sun go down upon your anger. Amen? If you're married, you can't just walk around mad at each other. You walk around angry, it's going to get easier and easier to be angry at each other. When it's easy to be angry at somebody, you'll forget them. Yeah. Then, what you're doing, you won't 
really fully see how you're affecting them. You stayed angry too long. You can stay angry at relatives too long. Yeah. So don't stay angry. Be angry, but don't look at somebody and say, be angry, be angry, but don't stay angry. And don't sin in your anger. These are the sins that you can commit being angry. Sins against God. That's doing something against God. Do you know that the black race as a whole, most of them are angry at God? They're angry at church because they believe church failed them. They're angry at God because they believe God failed them because the people that were preaching to them were, were divorcing their own mothers and fathers. You had a, you go into a church and your mama and daddy, your dad is a pastor of the church and he divorces your mom, then what, how does God look in that? At the church. I uh, can't get no hand claps. So these folks get angry. They, they get bitter because of that. Then they hate God and then they go start believing some old Hebrew Israelite or some old 5% of doctrine. Some old weird belief. Because they're so angry at the true and living God. Sins against your neighbor. When you're angry, you'll hurt somebody. And we're not supposed to hurt each other. Amen, Amen church members. There shouldn't be anybody in here you feel a way about. If there is, you need to ask God why. If ain't nobody in here slapped you then you need to ask God why you're upset. Why can't I sit by this person? Why do I, when I see him, I just, just roll my eyes and smack my jaw? You need to ask God because you've let your anger cause a sin against your neighbor. Finally, your anger will cause sins against yourself and your own body. If you harbor anger long enough, it's going to turn into a chronic illness. Yeah. That's what IBS and IBD, that's what those are. Irritable bowel problems are, is people suppressing anger. Mad. Because you know when you're real mad at somebody, you, you feel it down in your gut. But there are brain cells in your gut. Yeah. So you are literally walking around feeling a way that could eventually turn into something really bad. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. So these are the ways that these sins can hurt you. The enemy loves to plant seeds of hatred and anger in us by causing someone to treat us unfairly and cause us to harbor resentment for how long? Look, y'all, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. What are the old things that are passed away? The way you used to feel is passed away. What was done to you passed away. Your trauma, your issue, all that stuff is supposed to be passed away. The benefit that Christ can offer that no other God can. Is renewal. He can, you know, ain't no, I'm saying, uh, I'm a rocking you go little quote or whatever, Buddha and all this stuff. No, 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 no. Renewal, meaning a whole remaking of you to address what happened to you. Because the devil intentionally caused something to happen to you to put resentment in you for the rest of your life. In your 20s, you make stupid decisions because of resentment. In your 30s, in your 40s, 50s. And if you live past that, your 60s and 70s, they will all reflect that resentment from your childhood if you don't address it. Amen. It'll end your marriage. It'll end your good relationships. And it'll distance you from God's word. Resentment. Yeah. 
So the devil will plant this seed when you're young. First Peter 5 and 8 tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about, looking for who he can devour, looking for the person with anger. Well, oh, anger. Divorce, these are just some of them. Divorce, neglect, abandonment, abuse, violation. Misfortune can cause anger. Failure, someone else's failure. Grief, all come to birth anger in our hearts. This changes the way we treat and respond to other people. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whatever these did to you and made you think a certain way you're going to react to that thinking and your decisions are going to react or you, they're going to be caused by how you feel about what was done to you and that lasts a lifetime amen you know I'm in a room Friday and I'm not going to keep talking about this but I'm watching all these folks I grew up with these musicians and different ones and they all look dark. There's a darkness on them. I can't really describe it, but it's just darkness. A darkness on them. Because they went out there and started playing for the devil. While groom, but you were groomed in the church. Your ability was cultivated in the presence of God. And you took that, cheapened it, prostituted it, and gave it to the world. And man, I just got tired of them coming up to me. I just, I'm happy to see you, but look at you. Smoked out, drugged out but then get on the stage and sing gospel automatically, autopilot. Dude got up there so flaming hot, I'm, I'm surprised the stage didn't catch on fire. And he was up there just singing with all of them. And I mean, the stage should have just burned up. I messed my slide up, oh, okay. Oh, the stage should have caught on fire. Uh, back. Too far. See, that's what I get for doing that. <laughs> that, that tongue thing, man. Put your tongue in your mouth. You don't need your tongue. I taught high school choir for six years. I know how you enunciate when you sing and your tongue hanging out has nothing to do with the song. You can't sing with your tongue out. You not a camel. And he was up there, I mean, looked like the, soon as I saw that, I said, it's time to go because God is going to rain down brimstone. When we harbor anger, we cannot walk in the light of Christ, listen, when there's anger in your heart, light goes off. Anger is darkness. Can't be light. When, it's, when you harbor it, it turns your light off. What do I mean by light? Just the light of Christ. The brightness, the happiness, the man. You become an eternal pessimist when anger lives in your heart you look for the bad instead of being excited about the good yeah yeah always looking what is he doing what is she doing I heard and you harbor an anger people like that are harboring anger and you need to tell them say quit bringing me bad stuff about people what, what, what are you on? What's wrong? What happened to you? What are you mad about? What are you angry about? Who hurt you? Ephesians 5 and 
Ephesians 4 and 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, that's all that chatter, ying, 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 ying. and evil speaking be put away from you. Evil speaking. We see the word evil and we just automatically think knives and guns. No, evil speaking is just talking bad about people. Not giving people a chance or an opportunity. And the worst part, not remember when you were bad. Not remembering when you was out there. Not remembering your own faults. So he says, stop it with the clamor and the evil speaking. Let it be put away from you. You know better than anybody else. Look at somebody and say, you know better than me. And say, I'm no better than you not any better than anybody else so we can't be sitting up thinking we are and talking about people like we are yeah. amen don't get a reputation in this church for being like that walking in the light of Christ is really walking with Christ's eyesight hmm that's the light of Christ. You see things that Christ sees. Yeah. You're not walking around with doom and gloom trying to find some good gossip about somebody. You're looking at how can I help this person? How can I? Amen. Then you're seeing, man, I used to be like that. Thank God for what he's done for me. Walking in the light of Christ is really walking with Christ's eyesight. The Bible tells us your eye is the lamp of your body or the light of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Full of darkness. When the lamp is blown out of your eyes. So we walk in, in the light of Christ by walking with Christ's eyesight. When we walk in the light, we see things clearly and correctly. So we see souls, not actions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we see. We, no, there's a soul there. I know she wilding, she wilding, but you know, you used to wild too. But we see a soul, there's a soul there. So how can we get to the soul? How can we help the soul of that person? That's Christ's eyesight. That's walking in the light. Can't let everything people do just upset you to the point where, the, where you not save no more. Don't make me cuss. I, you know I cuss you out. You're not saved. Saved people don't cuss people out. Saved people don't use profanity at all. Uh-oh. Somebody like, well, God is still working. God ain't working on you. You're working on you. And you're messing it up. You don't have to cuss. You cussing because something else is wrong. Yeah, that's all profanity is. It's an extension of a situation that's happening inside of you. That's why those words come up. Those words come up because the spirit brings them up. Spirit of Christ ain't going to never bring up no cuss word. A demon spirit brings up cuss words. You like that exorcist girl. That's, that's, that's who cusses when a devil is in you. If you got a problem cussing, you got a devil problem. One hand clap. That's okay. I know I'm in a predominantly black church. We don't all talk like that. Or you talking like that because your music sings that to you. Your music is telling you to talk like that. I know I'm preaching in here. Amen. Because it's the truth. Everybody got to stop cussing. I had to stop cussing. When I got saved, I didn't want to cuss no more. And that was a problem. I got a big old head with a big old mouth. I could think of words that, I mean, I could make some up. They would all just fit perfectly together and make you want to just <laughs> cry. And I told God, I want, my, I want to speak your words. I don't, I don't want to do this no more. And God took that out of me. 
you know, cussing preacher. Any preacher getting up cussing got a devil. Because devils cuss. The spirit of the Lord, look at somebody say, the spirit of the Lord don't cuss. Yes, C-U-S-S, cuss. I'm not talking about swearing and cursing. I'm talking about what y'all do, cuss. It's a difference. It's a difference, Kevin. It's a difference. We don't do that. No, no, no. We give that up. We don't talk like that. Then we don't hang around people that talk like that. It ought to bother you. When I'm around somebody and they cuss, and I'm like, man, dude, you getting on my nerves. I'm about to say something. I, that, you No, I don't want to hear that. And they ought to respect you. It ain't nothing wrong with you asking for respect. Hey, hey, man, I don't talk like that, man. I got my kids right here. Man, my son, my daughter's right here. Man, my wife's right here. Man, can you please refrain from talking like that? What you going to do? I mean, you know, I rely on the Holy Ghost, but if you don't understand that. But that's just, you, you ought to do that. Not get used to it, but if every movie you watch is Friday, Friday after next, the next Friday, two Fridays later, all the movies, if that's what you're watching, then cussing's not going to bother you because you're full of it. But listen, you're not just full of cussing, you're full of the spirit of cussing. It's spiritual. Do do y'all think, see, that's why we can't just go and do what we want to do, because it's spiritual. When we walk in the light, we see things clearly and cor- correctly. We see souls, not actions. And then this causes us to remain hopeful that people can change and be better. So we see hope when we see with the light of Christ. You can be better. You can do better. This makes us loving toward others and prayerful for them even when they treat us poorly. Oh, that's the hard one right there, but that's the light. Light will make you pray for them even when they mistreat you. First John 1 and 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son does what? Cleanses us from all sin if we walk in the light. Amen. And this is the only way to have fellowship with one another. You got to walk in the light. Darkness can't be a part of it. I hope y'all are enjoying this message. I done went all kind of ways, but hey. However, when we harbor anger, we walk in darkness and see the bad in people and believe the worst for them. And many times we even believe the worst for ourselves when we harbor anger. That's the spirit of sabotage. You believe that things are going to turn out bad just because you're harboring anger. We lash out against others because of the anger that is already in our hearts. Yeah. She jumped in front of you and got a buggy at the supermarket. The one you had your eyes on. You already saw your groceries in there. Because it's the only one with good wheels. And she jumped in front of you and grabbed that buggy. And something clicked. You know, (laughs) something just. No, you don't snap at that. That means something was already wrong. There's something already going on inside that you need to get checked out. If a buggy at a supermarket can make you that upset. You done pulled the gat out over a supermarket buggy? You holding a saw off? How did you get that in the store? Something was already wrong when you took that gun off the shelf. <laughs> but something is wrong. You, you got to check yourself. I do it all. Uh, trust me, I do it all the time when little things Make me want the wrath of God like the sons of thunder. Jesus, kill everybody right now. And God is like, what is wrong with you? Think about it. What are you harboring? What happened to you? And you think about it. You roll it back. Oh, you know what? 
Somebody did do this to me. And that's what I'm mad about. And it happens to Christians a lot. Let me, let me tell y'all something. Now, this is for real. Like, if you're a Christian, then a lot of times you suppress the anger because you want to do the right thing rather than dealing with the anger. You suppress it to be saved. Oh, oh, thank God. You better be glad I'm saved. Well, you might as well go to do it. When you say all of that, if I was, boy, if I wasn't saved, I would just. Whenever your lips take on that contour, boy, whenever I, boy, you better. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to have God check. God needs to check that. Out. That needs to be worked on. Something is wrong. <laughs> when you, just, you know all the tea just, yeah. <laughs> but we lash out against others because of the anger that's already in our hearts first john says if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness what are we doing we lying you harbor an anger you're not walking with him you're not having fellowship with him yeah so as a Christian, you know, you don't, don't just suppress it and I better do what's right because, boy, if I had my way. No, that has to go. That needs to go. All of that, need, none of that, that's still darkness. You just renamed it and repackaged it. You know what? I'm going to do what God would do right now with this situation. I'm, I'm going to do, do what Jesus would do because what I really want to do, well, you <laughs> Something's wrong. Look at somebody say, get anger out. Yeah. All right, let me go through these. 11, okay, we're doing good on time. James 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. Healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Availeth much. Some things must be discussed. If you are constantly feeling a way about someone close to you and things they may be doing to upset you, talk about it. Amen. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. You be healed of anger if you go on and talk about it. But watch this part. Usually once you talk about it, you'll find that it's not so much what they are doing as much as what happened in your own past and how you are perceiving it. Yeah. Always pray for understanding for others and your own ways. Amen. Amen. Daniel 2, 22, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. The light is his and he knows what's in darkness. So we got to pray for God's open heart surgery. Pray that God will perform a spiritual surgical procedure to clean out the anger and resentment that is obvious or that may be hidden in your heart. You may be acting away and you don't even know why you're acting away. You may be feeling away and don't know why you're feeling it and you need God to show it to you. You could have suppressed it since childhood. And God wants to bring it forth so he can deal with it. Amen? Amen? So he can deal with it. Either way, God has the power to change your heart once you give access to it. Amen. James 4 and 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? Now, let me stop. Demons are real. We know that. Demons are real. But demons aren't as powerful as we try to make them. They're just not. Jesus Christ is way more powerful. He rose with all power. All power is his. So the devil don't have power over Jesus. He can have power over people if they give him the power, but he don't have power over the power of God. Amen? So if you do this, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, then you just perform the deliverance service. People call me all the time. Uh, Pastor, is your church a deliverance ministry? Well, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, because I have a demon and I need to come up there. And okay, so you talking as good as anybody. Like, I, I mean, my experiences with devils and demons, folks just aren't this articulate about it. Yes, yeah, see, and then he comes over here. He's, he does this to me and then he does this. And he's like, you done read all these books. You got all this knowledge. 
when all you really have to do is James 4 and 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Re Look at somebody and say, resist. resist. Resist the devil. So stop feeding the beast. Most of the time, 99% of the time, deliverance comes from resistance. The, and denying the enemy what he is used to get. Folk don't want it that easy. You want to come up here and take up all my time, have me, the elders, and everybody else sweating, tired, ready to go home, and you still just, because you won't let it go. When all you got to do is deny him access to it. Tell the devil, nah, you know what? I ain't going to the juke joint this weekend. I ain't going to the club. I ain't going to the Cliff Club Friday. I'm not going no more. Tell the devil you ain't going no more. And you'll stop manifesting cliff clubness. Right. Yeah, that's why you can't stop smoking black and miles. Because you keep going to the black and mile gas station to get gas. Go to one that don't sell those. Use the card on the outside. Don't even go in. You know you got a problem with the lotto cards and the Swisher Sweets. You don't need to go in that gas station. Say folk don't smoke. Hey Amen. We don't smoke. You know why we don't smoke? You know why we don't smoke? We don't have to smoke because what we were smoking for was an issue that we had. But because we're new creations, we don't have that issue no more. God has made us new, so we don't need the nicotine to mask what is wrong. People that smoke are masking something that is wrong. I'm preaching in this place. You don't have to like it if you don't want. Amen. Amen. I walked around Friday night. All the musicians, everybody lips black. My lips was just normal. Because I don't smoke no weed. I don't smoke. Because I'm saved. I don't have to be high. I have the spirit of the Lord in me. I don't have to be high and drunk. That's what the world does. So stop feeding him. Most of the time, deliverance comes from resistance and denying the enemy what he's used to, be, used to get. When he knows your buttons to push and knows what angers you the most, he will constantly use that against you. Sister Sue Berry going to sit by you every Sunday because the devil know you got a problem with her. You got a problem with Sue Berry. And everywhere you try to sit, she, here she come. She sit next to you. Because the devil wants I mean, want you bothered by her. Or maybe God is sitting there because he wants you to get it straight. She wasn't looking at your husband. She didn't talk bad to your kids. It's them old church rivals. You know, we grew up with those church rivals where the eye, they just beaming at each other. You, power of God can't even come into church because the beam is so thick. One on one side, trying to be louder than the other, and they just battling behind the preacher. That's right, Pastor. No, nah, that's this, that's right, Pastor. Huh? No. Nah, Y'all didn't grow up in them churches. Amen. And it wasn't a big church. So when you yelling like that, you louder than the PA system. The PA was radio shack and little speaker with a light. <laughs> but he knows your button. So you must learn to respond differently if you want a different result. If you respond to the devil differently, you'll get a different result. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 27 says, neither give place to the devil. So blame the devil, not people. Even though a person may have hurt you, it was the enemy working through them. Amen. You can't hate people.
because of what the devil did through them. People make mistakes, but the devil does not. People make mistakes. You got to let people off the hook because people make mistakes. But you don't let the devil off the hook because the devil does not. He use people. So you can overcome anger issues by targeting the source with your anger. Be mad at the devil. Look at somebody and say, be mad at the devil. Be mad at the devil. When you get angry enough at the devil, you will start blocking his access to you. Amen. I'm trying to preach to y'all. Romans 6 and 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? Walk in what? New, new, new. We got saved so things would become new. New. So look at somebody and say, walk in newness. Break the power of pessimism off of your thought process. Break the power of pessimism off your thought process. Cancel the assignment of sabotage and ill fate from your life. Rebuke the curses of ruin, failure, obstruction, and error from hovering over you. Many are angry at what life dealt them. So instead of walking in light, darkness surrounds them and hinders them from seeing things the right way. You can't do nothing about the decisions that your parents made or didn't make. You can't do nothing about your upbringing. You can't do nothing about failure in your family. What was done to you, what happened to you. You can't do anything about that. But if you dwell on it and harbor it, it will affect every decision you make. Now, you'll look at yourself and you will despise what you have become. One of my old friends I grew up with, man, I saw him at the thing, man. He had tattoos on his face. I said, dude, you used to play in church. And he probably still played for a church. Why'd you tie up your face? Because darkness was surrounding him. Out of all the places he played, he was too good to lose. So no pastor addressed the darkness. They're going to have to give an account. Amen. Summary. God wants to make you a new creation. He wants to remake your heart. And heal you of all the hatred and hurt that you are harboring. In order for Christ to live inside of you, he must first remove the darkness that is in you. The anger, the wrath, the envy, the entitlement, the hatred, the unforgiveness. Whatever happened to you may have been traumatic, but what God can do for you is greater than your heart's condition. Amen. God made your heart and he can repair it. And if you will expose it to him. Pray for a deep search within your heart so that God can fix every broken piece. This is what being a new creation really means. All things that were in you are passed away and all things that are in you are now what? Brand new. End times, it's right here. Revelations 11 and 18. And the nations were what? Angry. Angry. That's our time. Yeah. That's what makes them get online and dog other people out and hate on people. And, and they drive a d Republican truck through the Democratic area and they throwing stuff at it and trying to turn it over. They drive the Democratic one to the Republican. They in their windows with their shotgun ready to shoot it. All of this over what people are watching on TV. Just watching. Just watching it on social media. No, it's not. That's not why they're mad. They're not mad because of Trump. They're not angry because of Kamala. That anger is deep-seated. Something happened to them and it was never dealt with. 
and it made everyone angry. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. In Noah's day, the Bible said the earth was filled with violence. Those are angry people. Filled with violence. And what is it filled with now? Violence, because they're angry. Revelation says, and the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great. And should it do what? Destroy them which destroy the earth. Everyone stand to your feet. I'm not trying to destroy the earth. I'm trying to help the earth. I'm trying to help the people in earth. But I want to make sure I'm not walking around with anger festering in me. So whoever I need to forgive, whoever I need to let go, whatever I need to apologize whatever it is I want anger I want to be free from it if that's you I want you to just come up and we're going to believe God with you anger get it out I don't know what happened in your upbringing I don't know what happened I, I don't know but I do know anger will change your life it'll make you sick and then it will make people sick of you then it'll make you hate people. Then it'll make you very, very annoying. Because that's all you can talk about. That's all you can think about. It will literally take over your heart and turn you into somebody that God did not intend. But messages like this come so that we can get healing, deliverance, get it off, get it out. Get it out. Get it out. You know, God shows me some things. Mm. That's why I'm looking at crowds. He shows me. He's been doing this since I was started the ministry. And he's showing me people in here that's going to get married. Like, I'm seeing y'all. And it's good you coming up here because you need this anger out before you do that. Don't ask me who after service. Uh, pastor, you know, uh, did you see me? <laughs> it's weird. It's, I can't even explain it. That kind of stuff happens all the time. But be prepared. Be prepared. And if you're married, you definitely have to do this. Man, you and your husband don't be walking around not talking for weeks. Not sleeping in the bed together. Y'all supposed to sleep together all the time. Every night. Amen. And don't be trying to get in the bed early and go to sleep before he get in the bed. You better stay up and wait on him. <laughs> Can I just be honest? These, these are real things, man. Anger. Boy, anger will mess some stuff up. So we got to come. We got to just get it out. I want it out of me. You know, that's just, just, just a couple of people. Oh, da, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, leaving them on, I'm leaving them on this platform today. Y'all pray for me. But it's anger. I don't want it in me. I told the Lord the other day, I said, I want to be sick behind something somebody did to me. That's not, I don't want that. I'm not going to sit up here and worry about somebody and despise somebody. And every time I hear their name, oh, take it. Amen. <laughs> Especially when I know I was a jive turkey. There's some people you probably give my name to and they say, oh yeah, jive turkey. Someone was there Friday night. Because that's the last memory they have. <laughs> but I want God to change everything for me. Amen? And the same for you. So we're going to pray this prayer. Everyone bow your heads and we're going to trust and believe that this message will not return void. It was for real. This message was for real, for ABC, for this place, for every heart and mind in here. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your uncut truth. We thank you, Father God, that you give it to us the way it's supposed to be given. 
we hear it the way it's supposed to be said and there are no filters there are no changes to it God it is just how you feel so we thank you and Father God we just pray right now trusting and believing that you will repair us repair our hearts the heart that you made the heart that you gave us repair it God repair it remove every instance of anger however it got there lord somebody did us wrong somebody didn't do what they said some trauma happened somebody took advantage of us somebody may have died or passed on and we feeling anger because they're gone we're angry that they left us and we're angry that you let them go so father help us with all of this so that this anger doesn't change us into somebody that you didn't intend for us to be and God go deep in our heart make us see people with your light the light the lamp in our eyes the light we come against pessimism we come against negativity we come against father God all these feelings of regret and shame and disdain and all of this disappointment and father God just sabotage and expecting something bad to happen God we come against these spirits that are attached to anger and resentment and we cast them down right now in the name of Jesus we resist them we flee from them and father we will walk the way you want us to walk we will believe in your truth and walk in your way all anger in the name of Jesus. We ask that you remove it in Jesus' name so that we can live the way you intended. In Jesus' name. And Father God, we just give us courage to apologize to those that we carried anger for and mistreated and things we may have said and done and things we may have reacted to and may have believed that somebody else said and just all of that father god give us grace time to repent and ask for forgiveness apologize and make that right in the name that is above every name we pray and believe amen amen Amen. Hallelujah. Hug somebody and say, I ain't angry no more. Come on. I'm not. I'm not, man. Your situation may have been bad, but look where you are. Look where God brought you. Your upbringing may have been bad. Your daddy may have been not there. Your mama, whatever the case. But look where you are. Look where he brought you. Your father may have failed. Your mother may have failed. Your, 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 your upbringing, whatever it was, but look where you are. Look where he has brought you. Somebody may have cursed you. Somebody may have left you, abandoned you. Somebody may have divorced you and whatever. They may have beat you. They may have taken advantage of you, but look where you are. God's grace and mercy great is his mercy and his love and kindness hallelujah 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 look at the nice clothes you have on the car you drive look at all God has done so don't let the devil keep bringing up what coulda shoulda woulda look what is Look at what is. It's better than you could have ever made it. God had to do it. You making money. You making money in a time where money is hard to be made. Look what God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.